It's a quiet, sunny September morning in Cincinnati, Ohio. Across the city's downtown central business district, commuters are making their way to work for the day. Suddenly, the stillness of the morning is violently interrupted by a loud bang near Great American Ballpark. The explosion is heard across the entire riverfront. First responders race to the scene of what we later learn is an ammonia gas explosion that killed 25 people and injured hundreds more in the heart of downtown Cincinnati. a.m. UC Medical Center. The emergency department receives an alert via disaster net, a paging system that notifies local hospitals of emergency situations that there has been a gas explosion downtown. So we just got a page through disaster net that there's been a mass casualty incident, uh, which would be an incident where there are a large number of potential victims or fatalities uh, downtown at Great American Ballpark. Um, we don't know anything about the incident yet, um, except that it's, it's uh, begun. We hopefully will get information as we get it, but we're going to go ahead and start our uh, MCI plan to be ready to take as many patients as we possibly can. 8.39 a.m., Great American Ballpark. The American Red Cross, Cincinnati Police Department, and 35 fire departments from Ohio and Kentucky arrive on scene to determine the order that victims need care based on the severity of their conditions. Dr. Roche, you'll be our triage attending. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, the attendings are going to start going through our job sheets. Um, what I'd like for the residents to in their respective care areas is start going through um, your patients and figure out who can be discharged. Um, you can look at our um, MCI surge plan to figure out where patients can go. And let's start getting as many beds open as we can, okay? We notify all the staff throughout the entire house. Um, that's going to be the trauma pagers you hear off, going off right there to let the whole um, hospital know that this is, uh, this is going on. They'll get operating rooms ready, they'll get beds upstairs ready, they'll get ICU beds ready, start bringing in extra staff. Um, so this is how we get ready for stuff like this. 8.46 a.m., UC Medical Center. A physician and a charge nurse position themselves outside of the emergency department ambulance bay on the sidewalk. It's been a quiet morning at the hospital, but that changes quickly as the victims begin to arrive via EMS, bus, and car. Emergency department nurses wheel patients into the Shock Resuscitation Unit, or SRU, in steady yet quick succession. The SRU receives patients who require immediate, life-saving medical intervention. So we just about 20 minutes ago received a call that there was a um, mass casualty incident at Great American Ballpark. Um, we're getting a rapid influx of patients one one, right now. One-on-one -on -one a whole blood. Um, we have a patient who's actively bleeding so we're gonna try and resuscitate with blood product. So when the patient comes into the shoe, they're um, undergoing life-threatening injury, um, so they need to see a doctor within the next second to figure out what's going on, um, what we can do, how we can go, how we can proceed from there. A lot of the times the patients will go up to the OR from here. If they're stable enough, we'll get them to like CT scan for imaging. And then if they're, we'll kind of stabilize them. And if they're deemed appropriate, then we'll bump patients from here to other places to open up space for more um, severe, severely injured patients to come in. So far, um, uh, we have started receiving um, patients from the incident. We've got no update on how many patients there are. Um, we've uh, got a count of five, six, seven critically ill patients that are inbound. We've seen a handful of those already, um, and then a number of less injured patients. We've had a large number of folks who've brought themselves to the hospital, um, which is always a problem, uh, not a problem, but a, a concern we'll deal with in a disaster, um, that people will bring themselves to the hospital. And so those are unexpected, um, although we prepare to, to deal with that. 9.33 a.m., Great American Ballpark. Paramedics and emergency management leaders determine the final number of casualties. 25 people were killed instantly in the explosion, while 280 surviving victims need immediate medical attention. Do you have an update on the number of patients that we have coming in? Total of um, eight red, eight. six yellow, five green. Eight red, six yellow, five green. The colors, so in a mass casualty incident, um, we use colors to triage patients. It's just a uniform language so that 
I know and all the doctors everywhere else know kind of how critically ill the patient is. 9.46 a.m. UC Medical Center. Matt Eilerman, RN, works alongside three or four clinicians in the SRU, emergency medicine physicians, trauma surgeons, respiratory therapists, and pharmacists. So what you're looking at right here um, is the gentleman in the, in the blue cap is Dr. Othoda. He's our trauma attending. Um, uh, Dr. Nagel, who's taking care of this patient over here, um, is the um, emergency medicine physician. There's various other folks who are the uh, other doctors on the trauma team. Um, the trauma team always has at least three physicians on it, physically present at any given time. Um, and then we have our um, uh, three or four emergency medicine physicians that are here. So right now they're working with uh, the trauma team here on this gentleman who has a penetrating wound to his abdomen. Um, that will need to go to the operating room um, uh, to have that taken care of. Um, they're trying to decide how much stabilization we need to do here in the emergency department versus going ahead and rolling straight to the operating room. 10.23 a.m. UC Medical Center Command Center. The hospital incident command team, led by Meg Lewis, Associate Chief Nursing Officer at the UC Medical Center, gather inside the hospital's packed command center to prepare for a conference call with other team leaders. Now I'm going to ask the emergency department to report out. Can we get an update from the ED? Hi, this is Julie reporting for the ED. We are currently at 90 plus patients and continuing to receive patients. We are significantly uh, into black. Um, my understanding is as far as the drill perspective goes that the scene is continuing to evolve as we continue to get patients. Um, I can't give you a count of how many go into the OR or that kind of thing. You'll have to, have to kind of get that from other places. But all bed spaces, most all hall spaces are uh, have patients in them. So we're uh, moving fast, moving hard, um, and keeping going. The call includes leaders from operations, communications, logistics, air care, mobile care, trauma, operating room, and others. 1041 a.m. UC Medical Center. Over Dr. Curry continues to oversee the flow of patients She's got through the emergency wheezes. department. Expiratory wheezes. Okay. Ma'am, you think you're having an asthma exacerbation? Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and get you up in this bed. Let's get her on some oxygen, Jason. Let's work on getting her out of the SRU. Sorry to come on out here. Yeah. Let's work on getting her out of the SRU. Yeah. We're just going to get access. So one thing that you you see in large disasters is that people are uh, both injured from the disaster itself, but also their medical problems get exacerbated. So this young lady here has a history of asthma, and this incident has caused her to have an asthma exacerbation. So we're not just dealing with just trauma, we're also having to take care of medical patients. I was made aware of a patient um, on the other side of the emergency department that had um, chest pain and concerning EKG changes as a result. Um, so he's going to our cardiac cath lab with our cardiologists um, uh, for uh, what looks like a probably heart attack. Um, so we still have to manage the medical problems that are caused by the trauma, not just the trauma. We have a burn patient that came in, um, a full thickness burns, so we're doing fluid resuscitation and we're intubating to prevent her airway, um, and then we're going to try and get her up to the burns unit. With burns patients, fluid resuscitation is crucial because they lose a lot of fluids through the burns. A lot of what we're doing is coordinating resources, so it's not just our trauma surgeons, it's our neurosurgeons. We were notified by Disaster Net that one of the traumatically injured patients is pregnant, so we'll talk to our obstetricians and our pediatricians, all of which we have. Um, available here um, and can be down here in just a moment's notice with just a phone call. We're going to step out so I can hear a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, providers on scene have notified us that this was a vehicle into a crowd at the Great American Ballpark, and there has been a subsequent ammonia leak. Patients are being decontaminated at the scene prior to transport. All we know so far is what the paramedics who are transporting patients have told us. We've got no official um, information. Um, I'm going to work on trying to get maybe a, a number um, from the next folks that come in. Um, sometimes communications by radio and phone are helpful, and sometimes just asking somebody is the, is the right thing to do. So um, that's what we're going to work on doing. 
Yes. So one of the things that our trauma surgeons are doing is that Dr. Asoda is down here kind of doing all the triage, the initial um, kind of treatment, um, but a number of our trauma surgeons are actually up in the operating room, um, uh, ready to receive the patients when they get up there. So Dr. Asoda can stay down here, he can manage the patients initially, um, and the surgeons can be available in the operating room. When their patient arrives, they can begin their operation um, and help turn things over quickly. Yes, sir. Perfect. Copy. We can do that. 11.15 a.m. Command Center. The incident command team holds a second debrief. So I've talked to, I've talked to the OR team that's in the shrew. They said they currently sent eight to nine patients to the OR, and they have five ORs available to take patients. So we're okay with that. We don't need to open up the holding area for that. Um, we, I talked to the charge nurse who said the 20 or 22 nurses that were sent to theoretically to help out with things down here were very helpful. She does not need any additional. She has seven transporters and does not need any additional. Wheelchairs and stretchers are going okay. I can see empty stretchers sitting in the hall, so we have um, plenty of those for the moment. And as I'm standing in the squad bay watching squads, we have a slowdown in squads, and it appears that the numbers are starting to slow, and maybe we're just waiting word to see if the scene's been completely cleared of at least squad patients, we certainly can anticipate that we might continue to get, in real life, we might continue to get ambulatory patients for hours. For the drill, sure. that'll get stopped, and I'll let you know when that happens. The command center closes following the call, ending the simulation. We do this so that we can figure out um, where the issues are to fix them when this happens in real life. Um, everyone says that you should uh, train like you play, um, so we have to train like we have a real disaster. The exercise was a mass casualty incident that happened at our uh, in our community, so Great American Ballpark, where we had a massive explosion and we received uh, almost 100 patients here where we needed to treat and provide care for. Well, we hope it never happens, but if it does, we're prepared and we're ready for it. Um, and it's just our responsibility and, and our commitment to the community to continue to be prepared for this if it does happen.